Welcome in folks to another Fallout 76 video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a build that some of you new and veteran players might find very useful and rewarding to work towards during your journeys across Appalachia and beyond. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Junkies Auto Axe build, which after a lot of experimentation I feel would be very optimal and useful for you high health melee players. But before we get into today's video, if you find that this build helps you and you enjoy today's video, consider hitting the subscribe button and turning that bell notification on for more Fallout build and guy videos in the future. Because currently we're sitting at 184 subscribers over here on the channel and it would be awesome if we could reach 200 subscribers by the end of the year. So with the Season 10 update for Fallout 76, which brought players a brand new scoreboard and also the new game mode Expeditions, Season 10 brought us a brand new weapon, obtainable through the scoreboard, the Auto Axe. For the veteran players of the franchise, you'll remember the Auto Axe was introduced during the Pit DLC for Fallout 3, and with Expeditions, it's back and better than ever. You can unlock the Auto Axe very early on in the scoreboard at rank 15, and once unlocked you can craft it at a weapons workbench. You can also purchase modifications for the weapon from Giuseppe in the White Springs Refuge, using the brand new currency introduced with Season 10 called Stamps, which you can earn primarily through completing expeditions or through the scoreboard rewards during Season 10. The only mod that I'm currently using on the Auto Axe is the Electrified mod, which sells for roughly 85 stamps at Giuseppe's store. And the legendary effects I'm using on the weapon are a Junkie's 40% more power attack damage and your VAT's critical meters fill 15% faster. Now, let's take a quick look at the special stats and perk cards for this build before we go Jason Voorhees and all the enemies that Appalachia has to offer. With our special stats, we've got 12 points allocated into Strength, and don't worry, before you think, shouldn't melee builds be utilizing at least 15 points of Strength? Well, you're right, because the more Strength you've got allocated, the more damage you'll be dealing with melee weapons. But don't worry, we will have 15 points allocated with the help of the Legendary Strength perk card. We've also got 1 point into Perception, 10 into Endurance, 5 into Charisma, 3 into Intelligence, 11 into Agility, and 14 into Luck. Now to the perk cards. In Strength, we've got Rank 3 of Incisor, Rank 3 of Martial Artist, Rank 1 of Master Slugger, Rank 3 of Expert Slugger, Rank 2 of Slugger, and Rank 3 of Traveling Pharmacy, because as stated in my previous Junkie build videos, you're going to be a Junkie's build, so you're going to be carrying a lot of chems. I will add that if you are interested in knowing what addictions work best for my Junkies builds, you can click on the link at the top right hand corner of the screen to my Junkies Commando build, where I go in depth into the best addictions for Junkies builds. In Perception, we've got Rank 3 of Glow Sight, so that we can deal 60% extra damage to glowing enemies, and Rank 3 of Concentrated Fire. In Endurance, we've got Rank 1 of Rejuvenated, Rank 2 of Chem Resistant, Rank 3 of Chem Fiend, and depending if you're using Power Armor or not, Rank 2 of Ironclad, and also Rank 2 of Fireproof, even if you're using Power Armor, which can make you super tanky against Scorch Beast attacks. In Charisma, we've got Rank 3 of Tenderizer, Rank 1 of Strange in Numbers, and also Rank 1 of Inspirational. In Intelligence, we've got Rank 5 of Makeshift Warrior, Rank 2 of Power User, and Rank 1 of Portable Power for you Power Armor users. However, I've left 3 points optional in case you want to allocate 3 points elsewhere, or even for the likes of Bloodied Bills who want to allocate Max Rank of Nerd Rage, it's completely up to you. In Agility, we've got Max Rank of Adrenaline, Rank 2 of Gunfu, Rank 2 of Evasive if you're not using Power Armor, Rank 3 of Ninja for stealth melee damage, and Rank 3 of Action Boy because you will notice that you will need that extra AP boost with the Auto Axe. In Luck, we've got Rank 2 of Starch Jeans, Rank 3 of Class Freak, Rank 3 of Four Leaf Clover, Rank 1 of Luck of the Draw, Rank 3 of Better Criticals, and also Rank 3 of Bloody Mess. Now lastly for the Legendary Perk Cards. We've got Max Rank of Legendary Luck, Legendary Perception, Legendary Strength, Legendary Intelligence, Legendary Agility, and also Max Rank of Hack and Slash. Now, I will add that with Max Rank of Hack and Slash, you will actually deal Area of Effect damage with your melee attacks, which will actually make this build very, very fun to use. So we'll make sure to look at that a little bit later on in the video. Now that we've covered your special stats and also your perk cards, let's go and try this build out on all the enemies that Appalachia has to offer. I will also note that this build also works extremely well with chainsaws, because as of Season 10, you can now apply legendary effects to chainsaws that you find in the game, so we'll make sure to use that today as well. Alrighty, so let's try this out in our first test subject, our good old faithful friend, Swan the Behemoth. 
Alrighty, we are at Swan the Behemoth. Now, before we go down and we chat to Swan, what we're going to do is real quick, because we are a Junkies build, and obviously as well, because of the like of Chem Resistant, we are going to pop on a Psycho buff. So that will give us plus 25% extra damage, plus 3 to strength, plus 3 to endurance, and plus 65 max health for 3 minutes. And that's going to increase our strength up to 21. Now, obviously, with the likes of the weight bench that you can get back at your camp, and obviously as well other sort of buffs that you can get at your camp you can obviously increase this even further now we're going to hop on down here and we're going to see how swan is getting on today swan how are you doing arise arise my friend we've got some testing to do let's go and let's go and he's dead <laughs> so there you go folks as you can see the auto axe doing quick work there of swan so yeah folks there you go that is definitely definitely a lot of damage we're dealing there with the auto axe now let's move on to our next test subject which are pretty much going to be some scorch beasts so let's hop on down there to the cranberry bog and let's go and see how they're doing today let's go Alrighty, we are down in the Cranberry Bog, and what we're going to do is we're going to try this out in some Scorched, and then we are going to try this out on a Scorch Beast. Now, hopefully, a Scorch Beast will land. How many do we have? We've got one. Ah, oh, we've just got one. Okay, well, hopefully this one will land pretty quickly enough. Oh, wait, there's a second one. There's a second one. Now, what we'll do is, for the sake of experimentation and science... For science, what we're going to do is we are going to use that lovely hack and slash perk card there and we're going to see exactly how that works. And as you can see, the hack and slash perk card proccing there now as we're going at those scorched. Now what we'll do is we'll test it out on one of the scorched beasts. Let's go. Oh, he attacked me first. Let's go. Boom. Oh, <laughs> he jumped back. <laughs> So there you go, as you can see, doing quick work there of that Scorch Beast with the Hack and Slash perk card. Now what we'll do is we'll uh, just go at a Scorch Beast without going into Vats. So here we go. Boom. And he's out of here. As you can see, he is out of here. And also as well, that Lucky Break perk card proc in there as well, giving me uh, some extra repair there to my Auto Axe. Oh God, we've got a lot of Scorch there. Let's uh, quickly clean these guys up. Let's go get rid of these oh my god there's so many oh my god oh my god i'm out of ap oh there we go now we're back in business now we are talking there we go now, before we head on to our next test subject, which is going to be the Myler Queen, a quick thing that I want to add into this, obviously with the likes of the Hack and Slash perk card. Now, there has been some confusion regarding the likes of, can the likes of Demolition Expert and also Grenadier work with this particular legendary perk card? And the answer is no. It can't. So the thing about it is, obviously, Demolition Expert will increase the likes of your explosive damage. And then obviously, as well, with the likes of Hack and Slash, it does the likes of Area of Effect damage, as you can see there, which is an explosion. Now, the thing about Demolition Expert and also as well Grenadier, unfortunately, they do not work in unison with this particular card. Unfortunately, it is just the case. You cannot have an explosive melee weapon. It's just not a thing. It doesn't exist. Or who knows? Anything can happen when it comes to Fallout 76. Maybe someday we will. But for now, unfortunately, it does not work. So if you do try and allocate some extra points into the likes of Intelligence for Demolition Expert and also Grenadier for Perception, to try and boost that area of effect damage unfortunately that will not work so as of now that does not work so don't try and pop those in there but i just wanted to cover that just in case there was any confusion regarding that particular perk card once hack and slash actually procs that's it it's the only thing that will actually deal area of effect damage demolition expert will not increase it so yeah, folks, what we'll do is we'll move on to our next test subject, which is going to be the Myler Queen. And we're going to hop on over here to the likes of Quarry 3. So let's go. Let's hop on over there. Now, folks, we are down at Quarry 3, and we're going to see if we can get this Myler Queen to spawn here. Hopefully, we'll get a level 100 Myler Queen. And also, what we'll do is, because, yes, they tend to be super tanky, we'll pop on another Psycho Buff. Obviously, again, Chem Resistant, making sure that I don't get any extra addictions from this. And here we go. Do we have a level 100? Do we have a level 100 Mylar Queen? Oh, we do. All righty. Now we just got to wait for her to come out of the uh, <laughs> out of the water. Because unfortunately, we can't do anything when we go down there in power armor. So let's go. Come on. Oh, we got some Mylarks there as well. Oh, oh, let's get rid of you first. And let's go. Oh, God, she hit me. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Doing quick work to her. Can we get her before she hits us? 
Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Obviously, with the likes of the Myler Queen, yes, she can be very, very tanky. And then also as well, she can do a lot of damage, regardless of what kind of armor you're using, if you're in power armor or what it is. But there you go. As you can see, doing quick work there to the Myler Queen. Thank you so much, Queen. Thank you so much for being a test subject. Greatly appreciated. Alrighty, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our next test subject, which is going to be the White Spring Schools. So let's hop on over there and test this auto axe out on the White Spring Schools at the Golf Club. Let's go. Now, folks, we are at the White Springs Golf Club. So what we're going to do is we are going to try to gather up all of these ghouls first. We're not going to go at them individually. So we'll try and get them all awakened, try and get them out of their slumber. They've been sleeping on the job and they, they need to do some work for us. So we're going to try and gather them all up and we're going to try and round them to call them um, up to the upstairs section. So let's see if there's another one here. Is another one? No, 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 there's not. Oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, we got a Windigo as well. They're all awake. They're all ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Get these ones awake as well here. Oh, we've got a lot of them. All righty, let's go upstairs as well. Come on. Come on, folks. We've got a uh, an experiment to conduct. Oh, stop your screaming. It's okay. Don't worry, Windigo. We'll, we'll put an end to your torment very, very shortly. Oh, God, that guy just jumped right over the railing. <laughs> all righty, we'll hop on in here and we'll awaken all of these ghouls as well. Come on, folks. Awaken from your slumber. Let's go. Now, any more? No? I think we're good. Alrighty, so we'll hop in here to the corner and let's go to work. Let's go through all these ghouls. Look at them all dropping. Oh my god, look at them all go! <laughs> I don't know which way to look, there's so many. And as you can see there, that auto axe absolutely tearing through every single one of those ghouls like butter. And then also as well, that windigo. There you go, folks. The entire White Springs Golf Club, all gone, all uh, chopped up. Alrighty, let's go. Let's move on to our next test subject, which is going to be the Super Mutants, as pretty much at the location that I like to call Super Mutant HQ. So let's go to West Tech, folks. Let's do it. Let's go. Alrighty, folks, we are at West Tech, and we're going to try this out on some Super Mutants. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Auto Axe here first on the Super Mutants that are outside West Tech. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hop inside West Tech, and we're going to use the likes of the Chainsaw. And then what we'll do is we'll hop back out, and we'll go and test out the Chainsaw on some Scorch Beasts as well. Because as I said, the Chainsaw works extremely well with this particular build. And the particular Chainsaw that I have here at the moment is an Anti-Armor Flaming Chainsaw. Now, it does come with the Longbow Bar mod and also as well the Flamer mod. You do need to find these. You do need to find them in the world. And also as well, you do need to find a chainsaw in the world as well. Now, obviously, there's a lot of great videos out there at the moment because obviously with the increase of, you know, interest with the likes of these weapons, because now you can actually add the likes of legendary crafting to them. And also as well, you can also add le legendary crafting to the likes of drills. There's been a huge increase in interest. So there's a lot of videos out there. But if you're interested, Interested, look, I will definitely leave a uh, comment there for anybody who is interested to try and find one for themselves. If you don't know where to get them, I'll help you out in the comments, but just let me know. But anyway, there you go. We've got an anti-armor flaming chainsaw. We'll go and try this out now anyway. Let's go and use the auto axe first on some super muties. Let's go. Boom. Boomy, boomy. Boomala, boomala. Let's go. Get out of here. Oh, where's that dog on? There he is. That dog on dog. There we go, another super mutant gun. And as you can see, doing quick work to hit all of these super mutants. So pretty much, folks, we've, uh, we've we've proven our point. We've gone up against the likes of a behemoth. We've also gone up against the likes of Scorch Beasts. We've also gone up the uh, up against the likes of the Mylar Queen. And also, as well, we've gone up against some Super Mutants. So I think pretty much we've proven our point that this particular build, the one that I've put together here, is very, very useful. But obviously, look, you can modify it whatever way, shape, or form you see fit. Now, I know there's obviously a lot of veteran melee players out there um, in the likes of Fallout. 76. So yeah, if there's any other perk cards that you want to add or take off or any other buffs that you want to add to it as well, look, by all means, you know, optimize this build to whatever way you see fit. But what we're going to do is we're going to hop inside of West Tech now. We're going to use the chainsaw and see how it does. So let's go. 
Alrighty, folks, so we're inside West Tech now, and what I said was we're going to hop on to the likes of the Flaming Chainsaw, and we're going to see how this does. Again, if you want to see the rolls on this, breaks 50% slower, and also as well, it reflects 50% of melee damage while blocking. Now, it could be, you know, better rolls on this particular weapon, but hey, look, keep on rolling if you want to. I rolled an anti-armor Flaming Chainsaw on my first go, and I said, hey, look, I'll hold on to this, and I'll see how it does, and it does very, very well. But if you want to keep on trying for you know maybe 40 percent extra swing speed or plus one strength all that kind of good stuff when it comes to melee weapons by all means keep on going if you want to but for now we're going to use the anti-armor chainsaw and see how it does against the likes of some super muty so let's go the first one is gone <laughs> see, as you can see absolutely tearing tearing through super mutants left right and center and also as well there you go that doge is gone as well oh we went for a little bit of a uh a little bit of a flight there. There we go. Another super mutant. Anybody else? There's another one in here somewhere, isn't there? Oh, he's right here. There we go. We'll get you. And then also as well, we'll go on in here. We'll get these super mutants. Where is he? There he is. Excuse me, sir. We need to uh, test out some chainsaws on you. Would you don't mind standing still? Thank you very much. There you go. And then also as well, we'll, we'll grab the super mutants upstairs. There's a, another doge. And then another doge. And then a few super mutants, level 100 super mutants. As you can see, absolutely making quick work. And then also as well, three star legendary, not even having time to regenerate. That's what you want when it comes to uh, these kind of weapons, especially if you want to optimize your build the best way possible and you want to be putting out the best sort of possible damage. If you uh, get some enemies who are legendary that don't regenerate, it's always, always, always a good time. And there you go. A, uh, a boss super mutant there, level 100. And then we'll go for the last doge. There we go. Awesome. Alrighty, so as you can see there, folks, the uh, the lovely chainsaw, the flaming chainsaw, definitely doing some work in West Tech. But what we'll do as well is we'll hop on up back over to the Cranberry Bog, and then we'll go and test this out on some Scorch Beasts. So let's go, folks. Now, folks, we are back in the Cranberry Bog. We have a Scorch Beast who has spotted us, and we're going to try this out on this Scorch Beast. Now, hopefully as well, there's some Scorch that we can try this out on as well, because we want to obviously test it out on as many enemies as possible. Oh, excuse me. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's go. Come on, Scorch Beast. We just needed to land now. That's the only thing. We know how troublesome it can be when it comes to Scorch Beasts and their, uh, how they like to uh, stay in the air for... Many, 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 many minutes and many hours. Oh, there you go. And then obviously as well, as I said earlier, fireproof. Great perk card to use, especially against Scorch Beast attacks. So we'll see if we'll get this one to uh, to land. Are you going to land for us? Are you going to land? Come on. You, you, you're going to land. You know you want to land. <laughs> there we go. We've got two Scorch. Oh, this one's going to land. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Come over here. We want to, uh, we want to have some fun. Hey. Oh, there we go. Let's go again. Oh. Wow, we got a little bit of rubber banding going on there. Don't know what was going on. All right, let's go. Come on. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. There we go. Now, making quick work of that Scorch Beast. Getting through the Scorched as well. And we'll get through this one and then that one. And then also, oh, our friend decided to land. Let's go. <laughs> hey, there we go. So obviously between the flaming chainsaw and also as well between the auto axe, definitely, definitely making quick work of most enemies that we come across. Now, I haven't tested this out yet, the, the actual chainsaw against the Scorch Beast Queen, but I have tested it out against the, with the auto axe with the Scorch Beast Queen. And I have to say, it definitely does a lot of damage to the likes of the Scorch Beast Queen. Obviously, remember the days of, you know, when melee builds were pretty much the meta when it came to Fallout 76. If you remember uh, popping a, a Nuka Shine and, you know, if you had like a bloodied meat hook or something like that or a Deathclaw Gauntlet and you're killing the Scorch Beast and with probably a few seconds. But unfortunately, we're not quite there. We, we will never probably get back to those kind of days. I think those those kind of builds were extremely, extremely OP. But what I'll say is the likes of the auto axe, depending on whatever particular rolls you get, and obviously if you optimize it for your particular build, you can be doing a lot of damage against the Scorch Beast Queen. So I definitely recommend trying to uh, test this out as well. But anyway, folks, that is all of our test subjects there today. So what we are going to do is we're going to wrap up this video with the outro portion. So let's do it, folks. Let's hop on out of here. Let's go. 
And there you have it folks, that's an in-depth walkthrough of my Junkies Auto Axe build. I will add that it might take you some time obtaining and unlocking all of the perk cards and mods featured in today's video, but hopefully this will have helped you understand a little bit better on how this build works. As stated in my previous Junkies build videos, I've been using the Junkies build for roughly 90% of the time I've been playing Fallout 76, and after a lot of trial and error, I feel I've put together a build that will be an excellent addition for you high health players. And have fun with this build folks, and heck, even improve upon what I've created here, or follow this build down to a T, it's entirely up to you. I want to say a massive thank you to all of our channel members and subscribers over here and over on our Twitch, as it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work that I produce. You can also catch me live weekdays over on Twitch with the rest of the Fallout community, and if you'd like to become a channel member over on Twitch, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. For all of our Bethesda fans, if you find yourself over on the Bethesda store and want to support me and the channel, you can use my code BTPINEAPPLE094 to receive 20% off of your purchases at checkout. I will note that the code on screen will expire October 3rd, so if you're watching this after October 3rd, don't worry, I'll leave a link to our Discord in the description below where I regularly share my creator codes. If you're a fan of the channel and want to support our community in a more personal way, you can check out my merch store. We've got t-shirts, hats, mugs, prints, etc. that you can check out, which I'll leave in a link in the description below. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland, and I'll catch you all in the next video.